Greetings, everybody. My name is Lauren. I am one of two parts of Free J Designs. We are a mother daughter duo, and we really enjoy crafting and customizing items, and of course, putting rhinestones on things to bling them out. So that's why we're doing this custom tutorial today uh, to show you how to do these rhinestone templates on Inkscape, which is a pretty useful tool and it's pretty easy. Once you follow along, you'll get the hang of it. So you'll just begin, of course, with adding something here to work with. So go to File and Import and add your project that you would to work on. And once you import it, just click on OK. Once you import it, you need to size it appropriately for whatever project you're working on. I'll be placing this image on a water bottle, so it's going to be pretty small. First, you need to change your metrics to whatever you're familiar with. I'll be using inches. And then I need my image to be 3.75 inches. And that will be perfect for my water bottle. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. So please do not skip this step because you cannot modify your template once it's completed. Um, your software in your vinyl cutter will just make the circles larger, which will prevent your rhinestones from falling into place the correct way. So do not skip this step. Be sure to size your image appropriately for whatever your project will be. Next, you're going to add a box on top of your image and then change the color of it. I'm going to go for a blue color, but you guys can change it to whatever you like. So I'm going to leave that as blue. Go to Object and Lower to Bottom so we can see what we're doing. Once you've completed that, add a circle. This circle will be representative of the rhinestone size that you'll be using and is going to be the rhinestone holes once your template is completed. So just to get off of this part, I'm just going to click back onto the cursor so I can resize this image. I will be using an SS10 or 10SS stone and that's approximately 3 millimeters in diameter. So change your metrics once again. And I'm going to give my stone just a little bit of room to fall in, so I'm going to change it to 3.2 millimeters. I also want to change my circle to the color black, just like my image. And that's all. So once you do that, you're going to move that circle to the far left and the very top of your image. You don't want it to fall and intersect the image in any way because this is where your circles are going to form and cut off part of your image. So put your circle to the far left and to the very top. And this is where it gets fun. You're going to right click on fill, unset fill, edit, clone, and create tiled clones. Under the symmetry tab, we want it to say P1 simple translation. And under rows and columns, I have 40 by 40 because my image is pretty small and you can play with that for whatever size image that you're using. Under ship, I have ship X. Under per column, I have 40. And ship Y, under per row, I have 40. If you happen to put them both in the same per row or column, then your image or your tiled Clones will come out slanted, and it doesn't really work for some images. So you want to be sure that you put 40 in per column and 40 in per row. As you look at these other tabs, we're not going to change anything, but we are going to go to trace and make sure we have a few things selected. So you want to make sure this box is selected here under trace the drawing under the clones and sprayed items. Under box one, you want color. Under box two, we don't want to change anything. Under box three, we want color. And once again, you see your rows and columns are still here. And then lastly, you're going to create. Go ahead and close this box. We don't need that anymore. And now you can see here how the circles have started to clone themselves and how we're going to start getting our template. But we don't need everything, so select them all and delete them. And now we want to continue to clean this image up, so we're going to click anywhere in this box. And you can see it selected a blue circle in here, and that's what we're going to get rid of now. So right-click again under Fill, 
copy color and use your keyboard and select or press on control F to open your find and replace menu. And under find, we're going to paste and then we're going to search in properties. Now click on find and now you can see how it's selected everything we don't need and we're going to close this doc so we can continue to clean up our image. Once you close that doc, go ahead and delete your images, I mean your the rest of those circles so that we can move on. And once again, you want to close that doc before you move forward because it will slow things down just a little bit. Now, as you see, outside of my image, I still have some clone tiles outside of it. So I'm going to take a second to clean up my image and you should do the same. You can press on shift on your keyboard to select multiple at one time, or of course you can uh, click delete, click delete at your preference. I am, like I said, going to use the shift option so I can delete everything at one time. All right, so you can see me selecting everything. And then I have one more process to make sure my image is clean like I like it to be once I delete everything. Here we go. So you want to find a far corner. Sometimes this part is a little difficult, but you want to find a far corner where you can pull out your original image. And what I like to do to make sure my image is a clean one is change all those dots to one color. And then I put my image back under it so I can see how everything is forming. So, and take a moment to delete any additional circles if I need to. I also want to move these circles around. I think it'll look a little better once I get ready to do my template. And if something wonky happens, like you see now, just go back and click on the cursor and it will get that out the way. I keep doing it. So here we go. Almost finished. And I'll be placing this on top of some glitter vinyl. And if you guys want to see another video on that, I'll be glad to make a new one. There we go. Um, I want that gone too. So what do you think? I think that looks great. I want one more circle. I'm going to duplicate that one. So I can get one more right here. All right, what do you think? I think it looks good for now. All right, once you have that completed, you're going to move that original image out of the way. And we want to make all of these circles one complete image. So you're going to select all of these at one time, do a good drag click over everything, go to path and combine. Now you have one solid image. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit so you can see a little better. And we're going to put another box over those circles. And this is what will be your flop material. I like to give it a good size that can be duplicated without having to put in like three or four numbers. So I'm going to change my metrics back to inches and you can see these numbers are not very easy to remember. So I'm going to change my flop size to 4.25 by 4.25. So once I get that into my final cutting software, it'll be very easy to duplicate. We also want to turn this square into a path. So click on path and object to path. Once that's completed, lower it to the bottom again. So object and lower to bottom so we can see what we're working with. And like I said, this is going to become our flock. So we want to make sure it's nice, even and neat. So while everything is selected and if you happen to click off of it, you can do another drag click to select both items. And I'm going to go to Object and Align and Distribute. Then you can center on the vertical axis and then center on the horizontal axis. So 
So you can see how it made a nice, neat flock material for you there. Our last step is to cut it. So we're going to click on path while everything is still selected and difference. So now you can see how this is going to be a really cool flock material uh, to cut out on your vinyl system. Okay. Now, lastly, we just have to save it. So I can walk you guys through saving it. And just in case your image is very large and sticks out from your workspace like this, one of your options is to modify this workspace. So what you can do is go to File, Document Properties, Resize Page to Content, and then Resize Page to Drawing or Selection. So that'll make sure that everything that you've created fits onto that document workspace. So when you do save it and try and upload it into your final cutting software, it won't look weird or anything like that. So lastly, just save it. And I'm going to save it as my rhinestone ivy. And that's all, folks. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop those in the comments. If you want to see a different video, go ahead and ask us that too, and we'll be glad to create a new video. And lastly, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. We thank you for watching our video today, and we look forward to creating more for you in the future. Bye.